even if you're not into pens. Having one that writes anywhere is a worthy investment. Ice, fire, destroyed Russian tanks, on top of Mount Everest, or even in space. And this is all possible thanks to the patented pressurized cartridge made by Fisher in the USA. Let's try a more realistic scenario. You're enjoying a cold one while exercising your second amendment as you get an important phone call or thought that you have to write down. But thankfully, thanks to its compact size, you can always have a Fisher space pen on the ready. So you just need a writing surface and all you have is some old greasy paper that regular pens supposedly don't write on. Uh, it sort of writes, but I doubt you can see it on camera. So for demonstration purposes, let's reenact on white paper. So with a small amount of grease, no problem. But let's see how other pens perform. And what if we had more grease and different kinds of grease? So I grabbed a few, a fine liner, two bullet points, including a big round stick and multiple gel pens. The Unipen Fineliner, no doubt, bullet points could somewhat write on the less greasy surface, unreadable on soaked areas, while most gel pens did pretty well. And Fisher worked as advertised. Well, I'm feeling hungry, so why not combine testing and dinner? If I lived in the US, it would have been tax deductible too. Ukrainian refined sunflower oil and kalbasa, extra greasy. <laughs> Ah, this brought a world of hurt that even Fisher couldn't handle. But if I did have to pick a winner, it would be the Pilot G2. Funnily enough, it bested their own writing in the grease marketed downforce model. This is Sal, pig fat in Ukrainian, pretty popular too. After all, I just had to have an organic option, free range and locally sourced from a nearby village. So progressive and hip, our porkers reign supreme and undefeated. Take that! Japanese and American advanced technologies. Hi, name's Alex Train, and I actually use and try to test the products I review to the best of my ability. Remember that apartment building that it was hit during my Xiaomi gel pen review? One of the four tactical ballistic missiles that bombarded the area got it again, just as I was testing the Fisher Space Pen. Well, actually, I've been using the bullet version for over a decade, as I need something reliable that I can trust in unpredictable situations like these. Hey Klitschko, Garashenko, wait a minute, I need to swap my paper and pen and find a flat surface. Yeah, not gonna happen. Well, I'm pretty used to reviewers not actually testing products, like literally, out of the 100 screen bar reviews, no one cared to do it. Sure, you need to invest a whooping $10 into a light meter. But for pens, come on, you don't even need any extra equipment. Horizontally, most pens perform well, minus the sucker jelly roll. Let's see if angles prove to be a challenge. Let's kick off with the Pilot G2 that proved to be the best in my cooking grease test. And now the super smooth Pentel Energel, one of my favorite gel pens that I tested so far. The cheap Romstick Ballpoint pen, an even cheaper no-name ballpoint that I got for 2.5 grivna, which is like 7 cents. The Sakura Jelly Roll, aka the first gel pen. Maybe it's not useless after all. <laughs> Do I even need to test the Fisher Space Pen in this scenario? Okay, let's try writing upside down. Gel pens can write quite a bit. Bullet points, on the other hand, stop pretty fast. You'll have enough time to write down a license plate or phone number at best. The amount gel pens wrote varied significantly from one model to another. So back into the trenches. Looking at my upside down tests, I guess I should write for longer. And indeed, if you write for a little bit longer, your bullet points will stop. You might be able to write a sentence or two. Gel pens, once again, behave widely different. But what really surprised me was the Pentel, as it wrote less than upside down. The budget gel pen king, Xiaomi, which I totally recommend you watch my review about, is leading the pack with the Pilot G2. No wonder so many cops pick those up. But if you really have to do a lot of writing at weird angles, nothing beats Fisher, as the pressurized cartridge pushes the ink into the bowl regardless of gravity. This also gives you the ability to write on wet surfaces, as well as underwater. But why even talk about it, if we can test and see it with our own eyes? I tested the same bunch of pens on regular printer paper. Ball points straight out don't work. Gels? Uh, hit or miss. Mostly miss. And even if it does seem to write, 
the pigment doesn't really attach to the paper. The waterproof uni ball fineliner not only stopped on the very first word, but didn't fully recover even weeks later. Switching to another kind of paper, being a small notebook, didn't really change anything. So I decided to splurge on some fancy Italian stone paper biogami. The main benefit, besides the amazing design and the silky texture, is that it's waterproof. Well, it didn't really help anyone besides the Fisher Space Pen, but added a cool visual to gels. The ink slowly drifted from the page. I also conducted a two week long test of submerging pre written text into water to see how Fisher will deal with it. As most gels are waterproof, Pentel whoosh straight out, but more on that later on. With that out of the way, I decided to test their motto Fisher Space Pen. Goes anywhere, writes everywhere. Nothing too crazy. You could say everyday scenarios that you might stumble upon. Well, I guess it really depends on your field of work, that is. All sorts of paper, dirt, mud, rocks, tanks. Oh, and before I forget, this guy comes up on top when searching for Fisher Space Pen on YouTube. I'm gonna write on, short of glass. Lies! Lies and slander! It does write on glass and took me three seconds to test? And this is precisely what I was talking about with reviews. Why did he have to say that? Just why? Don't you have any glass at home? I tested it on a mug, beer bottle, mirror, and window. And it worked every time. But if I had to take a wild guess, most Fisher Space Pen owners use it more on paper than on tanks. So to see how well it performs, I cracked open a brand new refill and continued to write three pages of A4 in one go. Something I never really did before, as I usually use it on the go for short note taking and form filling. After watching a number of reviews during my research, I came to a conclusion that it must be mediocre at best or worse, just passable to get the job done. And I wasn't expecting that much. And oh boy, was I wrong. Be it the brand new refill right out of the box or hands growing from the right place, it's a joy to write with. Yes, obviously I need to put more effort than with my fountain pen or gel, but I liked it. And it's leaps and bounds better than the ever so popular Bic. Here's a real time speed playback so you can have a better idea. And since I usually shoot short reviews, I'm pretty bad at buying time. So not to reinvent the wheel, I will do what most YouTubers are guilty of. Ask for your likes, comments and subscribe. If you like stationery, uh, actually I do a variety of stuff. Thing is, YouTube can't really judge if a video is good, it needs your help. So it looks at the only thing available, which is user interaction. So your help will be greatly appreciated. And back to the review. To my delight, on top of whiteout and correction tape, the Fisher had excellent performance while tearing up the thin layer. And using all these stickers reminded me that besides the boring old black and blue, there are some fun color options available. And with pain in my heart, I took out my credit card and boom, three new color refills to spice the page up. I got burgundy, brown, and the color that I started liking after the Ogami notebook, teal. Or as I like to call it, Tiffany. These colored refills seemed even smoother than the fine black I'm so accustomed to. And speaking of size, Fisher's fine is 0.9, medium 1.1, and a bull 1.3. So I personally always opt for the fine, as most other brands would call it medium or even bold. And once again, a total pleasure to write with. But I started getting tired. My old brass bullet with clip is somewhat heavier than I'm used to. The weird stretched out standing position in order to film this doesn't help either. Add the one, two, four, six camera lights with two soft boxes packing eight light bulbs. It's also very hot. So if you want something lighter, don't worry. Fisher offers a whole variety of pens, starting with the super small and light stowaway that weighs just a quarter of my old brass bullet. And if you're still not satisfied, you can just buy the cartridge where all the magic happens. It comes with an adapter that lets you use it with any Parker style pen. And there are many to choose from. Yet some people go an extra mile and mod the cartridge. And my weapon of choice obviously being the bullet. It's so small that you can put it just about anywhere, even your underwear. But it turns full size when capped. I have to warn you about two things. I already lost two pens thanks to the very removable clip, but a few drops of universal quick drying glue seems to fix the issue, at least on the matte black version, and I can still, in theory, remove it compared to some more extreme solutions like cold weld and the question of durability. 
The pen itself is built like a tank, but the finish, not so much. What you're seeing is an extreme example, 17 years of EDC, but you can expect small scratches to appear within weeks, obviously depending on usage. So if you really want to preserve the look, choose the raw brass version. Fisher also has a few options which you can attach to a carabiner, and I played around with the backpacker, but the plastic top doesn't install confidence, and the much more appealing jump ring bullet is not for sale here in Ukraine. Let's see the impact water had on pre-written text in two weeks. Pretty much if you're not Pentel Energel, there is nothing to worry. If you remember, I mentioned that the color refills feel different, well I'm glad I decided to redo all the tests, as I found that underwater performance differs immensely. And I got two more water resistant papers to test, Karst and Pin and Farina. Both on Fisher's website and the packaging itself, underwater writing is stated. Well, I guess I'm not a low air, and technically they do write underwater, they just don't last. With my field of work, this is hella important, and one of the main reasons I picked Fisher in the first place. So make sure to test your paper and pen combo, as they just contest all of the colors, let alone paper. But black, undoubtedly has the best performance, while Tiffany is asking for a class action lawsuit. Here's pre-written text submerged into water for one week. The turquoise was gone in like half an hour, regardless if it was printer paper or one of the free fancy water resistant ones. So I guess I'll stick with the battle tested black, but maybe at least have some warning, as it could turn out as a very unpleasant surprise to someone who put faith in you. And now, my most favorite yet dreaded section, testing how long a pen lasts. Fisher is promising three times of what a normal ballpoint would write, up to 12,000 feet, that's 3.6 kilometers, yet the EU website promises 15,000. Since when do we use feet in the first place? I guess this might be for the fine version that I am actually testing. And as it happens, I already tested one of the most common ballpoints on the market, the Big Stick M, which lasted under a thousand meters. Maybe Fisher just likes round numbers. One page full of squares is around 12.8 meters and takes me half an hour. Oh boy. Seeing that it takes a lot of time and dedication would be an understatement, but to my surprise it stopped writing pretty early on. But as I was setting up the shot, it started to write again. Not for long though, which left me conflicted, being happy that I got it on film and sad because I assumed it will last much, much longer, and I don't really have much b-roll, I just bought this Parker pen, or, which is even worse, that it's not as reliable as we have thought. I'm still not sure about all the reviews talking about it not being smooth. Sure, it takes a lot more pressure, but it was smooth to the very end. Something I can't say about all the gel pens that I reviewed but not yet uploaded. 38 pages without any complaints, and I started skipping on page 49, and died on page 40. So let's open it up and see if there is any ink left, just preparation took hours, as I had no idea what would happen if I punctured the pressurized cartridge, and it was pretty anticlimactic, literally nothing. Well, at least to my relief there was still ink. It's also safe to assume that writing squares in a notebook is not that extreme. Not gonna lie, I was pretty mad about over 20 hours going down the drain, but I invested so much time and effort already, I got drenched 5 times just for that rain segment, and I have no idea how long the pen will last with all this fixotropic ink left, so I did the only reasonable thing I could and got more. Brand new refill, brand new notebook and lots and lots of squares. But as they say, always look for the positive, and I guess it's a golden opportunity for me to test their lifetime warranty. Also Fisher promises 100 years of shelf life for their inks. This is a never before opened vintage cup -o -matic. I think it's from 2006, let's see. Still 11 years, and it's not dry and right from the get go. I really wanted to get an older refill on eBay but no one's shipping to Ukraine, so if someone can get me one from like the 60s or 70s to test and compare, it will be greatly appreciated. As it seems like a great product to stock up on if you ever see it on sale, just please use my affiliate links. It would probably be somewhat complicated to explain that I spent days writing squares and my pen failed with 90% of the ink left. Fortunately or not, I had another one. 
which started spewing ink after being inside a walk-in freezer at minus 18 degrees. That's about zero in freedom units. So I emailed our local distributor, as it's nothing extreme really. We get times like that in the winter, and I froze Fisher Space pens in ice multiple times before, say in my 5 year old video, and for this one too, without any issues. So I guess it is a faulty refill after all. The 6 cent ballpoint and cheap gel pen survived and rode at minus 18 degrees, they also survived being frozen in water. But it took an hour or so till you could write with them after getting defrosted. Fisher on the other hand writes instantly. Boiling water? Not a problem either. So most of those reviews you could have seen praising the space pen doing these kinds of tests are moot, as expected. If not for the war, I would bribe a university assistant with a box of vodka to help me do some more scientific experiments. But now everything is closed. So the best I could do was use a heat gun that I couldn't film. But we only got the refill to 120 degrees, as we didn't have a controlled environment and I didn't want to risk yet another refill failing. Oh yeah, the warranty. They ask where and when I got the faulty refill. To which I honestly answered that only God knows. As just for this review, I purchased a dozen, probably from one of the two lost bullets, as I replaced all my refills to find. And I waited. After 3 days I assume that there is some technical issue. So I resend the email to both emails provided. And waited again. It's good that I have squares to kill time with. 2 weeks later, still no reply. I cannot blame Fisher. After all, they are a family owned business. And physically cannot oversee all of the distributors. So I decided to help them. And emailed every single one of them, providing an explanation and photos of a real faulty cartridge. Some websites were outright dead, some only had phone numbers. I managed to find a few by googling the company and contact person's name. Others had photos of emails and what I guess is anti-spam measures that change the email when copy pasted. Guatemala? For some reason, redirected to Germany. And oh god, for love of everything sacred, please just put an email written in text. I was going insane with Outlook not working. Ideally, if Fisher would just include the email on their website. And if I was to make a tier list, Taiwan, Norway, Italy, Germany, Austria, Estonia, Sweden and Switzerland as tier. Role models no less, followed by New Zealand and Japan. Friendly, fast and easy to follow instructions. The South African representative was out of office as per the automated email, but there was a number for anything urgent, so I won't be reading them. Denmark and Australia said that they need to contact Fisher, and I got an email from the head office, so I had to disclose the experiment. Finland couldn't find my email in the system and asked where I got the pen from. With my Ukrainian experience, I was very tempted to pick one of the lesser known astronauts as my alias, so I could link them the Apollo missions. Poland told me to contact Fisher directly. Luxembourg and the Netherlands had probably the most fun reply ever. To get my lifetime warranty on an $8 refill, I have to make photos, description, ship it in and then pay double its retail price in the hope that they approve my exchange. I got an answer from Argentina. But since Fisher was already aware of the experiment, before I got their second reply, I won't be counting it in. While others didn't reply, most shockingly Canada. My wild guess would be there is no warranty training, it was just put in contract a few decades ago and used so rarely that uh, they just forgot it exists. So maybe it's time to give a little refresher and you know, spend a couple of hours just like I did every other year just to make sure that whatever it is, legitimate concern or a marketing gimmick, it actually works. And I do want mine replaced, the premature ones also. And maybe, you know, exchange this to something that actually works with water. And back to the squares. Besides giving me an estimate on how long a pen lasts for, I also get info how it performs over the course of its life. <sighs> Thankless job really. I know tipping culture is big in the US, so why not buy me a coffee? As this review took literally hundreds of hours and I'm not getting paid a cent, even by YouTube as I'm not yet monetized. So please, do consider. With the war going on, getting a second job is unbelievably hard and the pay is cut drastically too, while the prices rose to the heavens. Also, if you are planning to buy stuff, say on Amazon, use my affiliate links as I get a small commission at no extra charge for you. And you know what else doesn't cost you? Leaving a like and comment. I switched from the bullet to a Parker Jotter as even 5 grams when writing for hours is very significant. 46 pages went without a single hitch. 
page 47 was the first sign of trouble, but then went fine for the next 10, and started getting messy from 58 to 67, and more afterwards, I guess due to the ball's degradation. From page 76, it started to skip, and was pretty much a pain in the ass until it died on 94. So, in the end, it only did a third of what was promised, and I would probably replace it on the last 17 pages or so. And you guessed it, I broke it open to see if there's zinc inside, but this time I knew what I was doing and I didn't have to cover my room as if I'm Dexter. And yes, there's plenty of ink. In Fisher's videos, I have seen the machines responsible for testing. And well, they're not removing the pen from the paper, something I'm sure you can do with a plotter these days. Changing direction, the pressure, and just going on and off the paper. Maybe it's time to upgrade, I even have a business idea. Imitate handwriting, and then get a contract to do religious texts. Those are always in demand, so you're not only testing the products, but making a profit while having no waste. So let's make a quick rundown. Oh, and my children will totally test the 100 year claim, so subscribe not to miss that.